welcome to the Women's Network. I'm Elke and I am your host. You are in for a terrific show today. So for those of you who are not settled down, please do so in a hurry because you don't want to miss a minute. Uh, our topic today is women in theater. And I have some fabulous guests with me and uh, I know you will enjoy the show. Uh, just a little while ago, I went to see a play, Gabo's Cuban Lover, and I was so, um, the, the play, the writing, the uh, production was so terrific that at the end of the play, I had to meet the uh, producer and uh, immediately I asked her to come be a guest and uh, fill us in because she is, uh, absolutely terrific, has a great background, and without much further ado, let me introduce you to Odalise Nanin. <laughs> Odalise, did I say that right? Yes, you did a I very good it. job with pronunciation. <laughs> Odalise, Hi, tell, uh, tell the audience just in uh, a few words a little bit about your background. Well, I started off as an actress in New York. Then I came out here and started doing commercials and a lot of you know TV stuff. Then I realized that I wanted more of a gratification in terms of my acting career, in terms of like getting really good parts, because there are not too many parts you know in Hollywood for Latinas. So that's when I started uh, forming my own theater company, which is how Garbo's Cuban Lover came about. Macha Theater Company was formed about two years ago, but I started producing and directing and writing theater like much longer than that. So it's Macha Theater Company stands for Mujeres, which means Women, Advancing Culture, History, and Art. And it's a nonprofit organization, and it strives to promote Latina, women of color, and lesbian art and culture through the dramatic arts in Los Angeles. And we are the only professional theater company that promotes that kind of uh, My God, that's uh, quite an undertaking. Yes, it so is. I wanna, I <laughs> Some people think I'm crazy <laughs> because I'm doing that. <laughs> It <laughs> sounds like you just scratched the surface. I mean, you have a lot to, to <laughs> go to. <laughs> well, um, I want to hear much more about it. Okay. And we will. And uh, we have someone else from your production, yes. Gabo's Cuban Lover, and that is Maria Bergman. Maria, so good to have you here. Thank you. Why don't you? Uh, you were terrific, by the way. Thank you. And so was the rest of the crew. I mean, it's. I it's, had a great cast. Yeah. Casting is like, you know, 60% of your job I as a director. I'm sure. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Maria, why don't you? give the audience just a, a brief uh, background. Oh, okay. I've been acting my, my whole life uh, in Denmark. My, my dad is a director-producer. And I worked in Moscow and London, and I was in New York for 10 years. I went to uh, NYU, Circle in the Square, for acting. Um, I did uh, lots of stuff there, and I came to Los Angeles recently, and I, um, I always believe this, as an actress you should keep staying in the theater because that's where the, the true real work right. takes place. So as soon as I came out here, I, I wanted to get involved in a play. So and you met up with Odalis. I know. Yeah, Odalis. Yeah, <laughs> very hard. She sent me three different pictures of different, <laughs> three different looks of Marlena Dietrich, <laughs> but Maria Bergman. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted It's it. funny, you know, you get so many pictures, you're going through pictures and pictures and pictures, and then I pick one, and it was her, right? Yeah. But I had seen her picture before, and I was not aware that it was yeah. the same the actress. Same <laughs> yeah, right? my, my agent and uh, my manager and me, three people submit. Oh, well, great. That's, that's well, when see, you know it that worked. an actress really wants well, that I work. wanted yeah. it. She yeah. wanted Marlena Dietrich. Well, <laughs> well, you certainly came off like Marlene Dietrich, I mean, it was just really incredible. You did a great job. Thank you. And I guess uh, you must uh, say the same thing, right? She just uh, was oh, fabulous. Yeah. She I mean, really everybody captured in, it. Everybody in your cast. Garba was terrific. Oh, Lee Denier was amazing. Yeah. She saved me. The hardest part to cast, actually, in Garbo's Cuban Lover is that part of Greta Garbo. I because mean, Because she's uh, just such a, a diva, and she's just such enigmatic. Personality and the way know, she just uh, had that. She just strength. took it over, you know. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> Too bad she couldn't come, but then we have so much more to talk about. In fact, let's let's start with the uh, the March of Theatre Company. That is, to me, it sounds like such an undertaking, and and you're very brave to uh, start something like that because first of all. You need sponsors to get something going. Mm -hmm. You need uh, you need money. Uh, you need money. <laughs> well, uh, the sponsorship. And uh, what um, what what prompted you to uh, 
you know, <coughs> to be brave enough and uh, start a new foundation? There was no venue. There was no place for the kind of stories that I wanted to write. And I believe that if you want to write something and you're very passionate about something, you create your own venue. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just writing the piece, it's directing it, producing it, and performing it. So that became kind of like my drive. And I wanted to look for a um, specific place that promoted Latina women in the theater. You know, women that did something, but that nobody really knew about them, like Mercedes mm -hmm. de Acosta, mm -hmm. who was an amazing woman. She was a playwright working for MGM Studios in the 1930s. As a wow. woman, that's, that was very rare at the time. And she was getting paid oh, for yes, it. Oh, yes, yes. She was mm -hmm. an out lesbian, another incredib incredible thing to do back mm -hmm. in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And so she just became uh, a, a character that I had to write about. It oh yeah, becomes an obsession, a passion, and then what do you do with that? You have to perform it, you have to produce it, you have to like <laughs> let people know about it. So yeah. it's an education as yeah. well. You're educating your public, your audience, yeah. in terms of all these wonderful women. You know, there so are not too many women uh, films out there. You know, this is a no, boys' town, I as know. you well know. Oh God, yes. You know. <laughs> well, we have uh, some organizations like Women in Film, and now you're yes. starting this and some other areas. And uh, I remember. Uh, from a few years ago, they are, everybody's sort of growing in leaps and bounds, and I hope this is what's going to happen to you. I went to your first fundraiser, and uh, you had quite, quite a yeah, showing there. Yeah, we had over like 160-some people there. It yeah. was wonderful. I had a great time. It was like really amazing. Yeah, it was terrific. I have, I have already gotten a cue for our first clip. Now, the okay. clip, tell us a little bit about the first clip. Well, this is like a fun trailer that I put together with my editor, and I work with him all the time. And um, I just wanted to have like a prelude of kisses mm -hmm. and, uh, and combine the old films with my productions. Yes. You know, that you actually can see these clips actually on my website, Matcha Theater. Dot org. And you can uh, actually, this clip is a combination of all those kisses that happen in every production that I've done. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> Let's go see a prelude of kisses. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's over already? <laughs> it's fast. You know, it's just like a tease. Let's see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it again. People uh, actually clapped and laughed when, oh, uh, yeah, when I showed yeah, it for the first time. It was time. great. <laughs> right. Maria, um, um, so you uh, played the uh, Malena role. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what uh, how did you feel about that? I mean, how did you uh, feel playing this this particular woman who was so out there and so controversial and so well. Uh, now you had to really come up with, you know, <laughs> some, you know, you had to really mm. follow something. Ahead of her time, Arlene. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, it was hard to, to play my idol. At first I was scared. I thought, no, I can't, you know, I so can't. So she was your idol as well? She was oh. my idol. Mylena Dietrich mm. is my idol. And I thought, you know, because she doesn't ask, she takes. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes, <laughs> right, right. So, um, uh, I just, uh, how uh, I just... Did you have to kind of change your personality totally, a little bit? Totally, to totally. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I learned a lot from her, too. You know, I just did a lot of studies of her, read everything I could read, watch everything I could watch, and just try to live myself in to her character as much as I could. and. And before I knew it, every night I would become her more and more and more and more. And, and uh, you know, in the end, it almost felt like you were her, right. you know? Yeah. Even well, now, you showed it. <laughs> <laughs> even now, if I, you know, if the, I feel like I can't do something, I just think of Melena and yeah. go, oh, okay. How did it feel working? <laughs> How did it feel working with Odalise? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was great. Well, what could you say, right? <laughs> no, 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 
the honest truth. I mean, let's say working uh, with her company. It, and, uh, the, the honest truth, it gave me, I, I told her to, I, it gave me a lot of strength because I admire her a lot mm -hmm. for, you know, as being an actress in this town can be, you know, very hard yeah. at times. Yes. And she's making it happen. You know, I don't know a lot of people who wrote, direct, star, right. exactly. and the stress and pressure she was under. <laughs> you didn't see what was going on behind the scenes, no. but there was a lot of uh, pressure back there. and drama sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always drama. It's always backstage but, drama. But she <laughs> dealt with it and I, I, you know, I really admire her and and uh, I think it's an inspiration yeah. more than anything, yeah. Is this town difficult to put on theater shows? I Very mean, plays difficult. Because we are in the film movie mm -hmm. industry here. Oh, we're, we're fighting, you know, all those special effects out there. You can go mm -hmm. and, and see, mm -hmm. you know. And, but there's nothing like live theater. Oh, there's no. There's nothing. No. And I have some, you know, short films that I've produced myself and directed and yeah. written and stuff like that. And I have a couple of screenplays mm -hmm. that I have an agent that's looking at and all that stuff. But the satisfaction that I get when I'm on stage to get that immediate feedback from the audience. Right. Great. Nobody. You right. can get that yeah. nowhere else but on that stage. Well, you know that uh, even our big actors, every now and then they go into like smaller productions yeah, yeah, and go to these to. little towns back east mm -hmm. and uh, and do their if you're a real summer true run or whatever. Actor, yeah. you have to do that. It's like it's like I can't explain it to you. It's like you know practicing the piano. You know doing your exercises or right. something. It's going back to that original thing that initiated that passion to become an actor to begin with. What's no. on your plate with the March of Theatre Company? What's coming up next? I mean, do you have anything? Um, yes. Uh, I'm going to be doing a play that I did five years ago, and it's the five-year anniversary of Love Struck, which is a beautiful romantic comedy between these two women. And it's very, very funny, and it has dancing and music and a lot of cultural clashes that happen between them. And it's between this Cuban uh, girl and this American girl and their uh, love affair. But it's very funny. So I'm bringing so that back in October. Oh, you're bringing it back. So mm -hmm. that's great. It's so going to be revised. It's going to be some new scenes added mm -hmm. to it. But it was, was very popular back five years ago. And every time I meet somebody that's seen it, they say, oh, when are you going to bring that one back? So I said, well, I'm going to do it now. Five year anniversary. But you know, one thing I wanted to tell you about Garbo is that Garbo, um, I wrote it in two weeks. In two weeks? And I did six drafts of the play while I was rehearsing did it. Did you sleep? <laughs> no, I didn't sleep. <laughs> there was no time for sleeping. Now I know how to do it. That's why when she was going through the process with me, this was a very special process. Yeah. It was really a workshop production. So you were really in the I momentum. Was, you just couldn't yes, stop. Yes, it right? was like, and, I, and my co-director, Yvonne Call, was mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Got and it. I have to mention her because she really was there. Now and she what really about all your research? You had to do a lot of research. I did a lot of research, yes. Yes, I read her memoirs, you know, of Mercedes Acosta, He Lies right. the Heart. I found out that the actual letters of Garbo's were, you know, released to be read at the Rosenbach Museum. So I flew to Philadelphia, God. and I went in. They had to make a special appointment, and you sit there, and you, they put gloves on you, and you go through the letters that were written to Mercedes from Garbo and Marlena Dietrich from the 30s. Can you imagine opening those letters? Oh it was like going God. back in time. <gasps> And like then there's Isadora Duncan, who wrote oh her incredible God. poetry. There is um, Eva de Galeán, that famous, you know, Broadway star. She was a lover of her as well. I mean, Mercedes Acosta is, I think, an amazing personality. Well, you not only had to research Mercedes, you had to research all the other women, oh, well, too, yeah. as well. But, you know, I grew up watching Garbo. I used to stay up to 2 o'clock in the morning you know, watch Garbo move flicks, you know. I know, and, and unfortunately I, now, I mean, in fact, just... And now I'm like, you know, I've created this play where I make love to Garbo. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know. Boy, you really, <laughs> you really went the whole route. I mean, it you, was like, it started when I was, it really started when I was 10, you see. <laughs> You weren't satisfied with just uh, I wasn't just satisfied watching with just her movies, watching the silent <laughs> or the you know her movies. You know, I had you to had bring to her to life. Yes, yes, and you. Do. I mean, the Mercedes is such a <laughs> <laughs> such a plum part. Well, I mean, you know, I have. I had. I, there's a lot of common things between Mercedes and I. One thing she is. Um, her father was Cuban. Cuban. Uh, she's a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. She was a writer. And I'm a writer right. in Hollywood, and it's just so you, you know. So you just kind of hit it off. Yeah, in that I, way. you know, I was like. Too she bad you have you couldn't meet her. I mean, in real life, you know. Oh, so. I know. But anyway, but I we feel got. We have to go to the next clip. Right. <laughs> We've got to go to. You talked so much about Garbo, so let's go to the next clip and lead us in. Oh yes, this is Lita Denier, and she's an amazing actress. And this is 
the, their first meeting, Greta Garbo's and Mercedes' first meeting. Okay. Here we go. Mr. Costa. Yes, Oliver. This is Greta Garbo. I've heard so much about you, Ms. Da Costa. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. The pleasure is all mine, Ms. Garbo. Please, call me Greta. To have Greta in the flesh before me seemed the most natural thing in the world. I felt like I had known her all my life. In fact, in many previous incarnations, she was remarkably beautiful. Far more so than she seemed in her films. So, do Swedish girls dance? We Swedish girls are good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> do you room? A little. <laughs> we Cuban girls are born dancing. Is that where you're from? My father was born in Cuba, my mother in Spain. I was conceived in France, but born and raised in New York. However, my heart is like my father's, resolutely Cuban. Bailamos. <laughs> I have a confession. Already? <laughs> I am not a very good dancer. <laughs> I'm a very good teacher, Miss Garbo. Stopped right at the, <laughs> the <laughs> wrong moment. <laughs> Again, we should have seen a little more. Oh, that wow. was absolutely you have to wonderful. You come see the play next year you know, at the Fort Amphitheater. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. I want to see it I'm again. I'm bringing back Garbo's Cuban Lover, Under the Stars. Oh, God. Go. Great. Great. <laughs> well, that was a wonderful clip. I mean, I remember it from the play and then again from your fundraiser. It's, it's just it's just so beautifully done. Like I Thank said you. earlier, you really put your heart and soul into it. Mm -hmm. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, the audience, I mean, if it comes around again, like you said at the uh, amphitheater, you have to see it. I mean, just the story alone is so exciting and it's interesting and it's, it's real, it's history, it's, uh, you know, it's all in there. Yeah, so, uh, all of it is in there. Right. So what's your next uh, step? My next Yeah, uh, what, step. Uh, what are you up to? What's coming up with you? Um, you think you're going to be, uh, is she going to be part of your... I don't know, you know how <laughs> actresses are, she's yeah, busy. <laughs> <laughs> the actresses have been very busy in yeah. this yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I have. Let's a, hope so. Yeah, I have a few things uh, lined up, but in in this business, it's very up and down. You know. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you always seem to book a bunch of jobs at the same time, and then there's a dead spot. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can't do one or the other, and then you, you're sitting there, right, with uh -huh. uh, with nothing to do. Have you? Uh, done film and uh, uh, TV? Uh, yes, I have. How do you compare that? I mean, um, well, I know earlier you said, you know, you want to stay in the field of acting as far as theater is concerned. Yeah, I want to always try to do theater um, because it's, uh, that's where my passion is because mm -hmm. you, that's when you can really get into it where in, in 
film and, and TV, TV you get two takes, three max. So you go in, you do a little snippet, right. and then you cut off, and then you have to go back and do a little snippet. And where a movie, sometimes you have to retake a scene 15 times. You know, so it's not very organic, and you can't really feel the audience. And right, and it becomes mechanical. Yeah, and it's little snippets where in, in a play you get the whole continuity of the, of the play. Right. You know, and I love the audience. You can feel, I mean, it, it's different. If mm -hmm. we have a good audience, mm -hmm. the play is oh so yeah. much better. Yeah, you know, I can tell. Feed, you feed <laughs> off the right. audience, you know. And my, I mean, I like to go, let's say they have a matinee performance and then in the evening uh -huh. as well. So I will, you know, I like to go to the second show, no matter what, whether it's at six or All whatever, right. you know, because I feel like the actors are on they were more, warmed up. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. And, uh, you know, so you have, uh, because I feel like they play with the audience. You know, they, I mean, they, they take feedback from the audience and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you, you go with that feeling. Right. In fact, a lot of times I go places and there's maybe a performance like a singer and that poor singer is, you know, has an audience of three or something like that, <laughs> you know, and, and, and uh, he it's a great, great uh, singer, songwriter come to talk you. know, I, you. I promised myself as a producer that there will never only be three audiences three people in You'll my audience. You'll call up your friends. No, no, call up no, your I promote it really well. Yeah, I know I you do. promote the place. Yeah. And because just, just for the sake of the actors, you Exactly, know, I know. Just, um, they need that, yeah. they need that. And like, like you said, and you too, uh, uh, you know, you want to stay in this uh, medium because, you know, a lot of people are learning after films and TV and, you know, for the sake of money and I'm sure. And, uh, you know, so you, you have, a limited amount of people that really want to stay in the theater, right? I mean, especially well, yeah, especially the in a film town. Right. You know, you go to New York, and it's just a different kind of feeling over there. Right. You know, that's why I send it to New York because I'm hoping that right. you know, a theater company where they will produce it. Which I think but it then really New York there. has also the competition because it has Broadway, off Broadway, off off Broadway. Yeah, but there's a no, theater audience in New York that oh, yeah, we definitely. have not created here yet. Mm -hmm. Although there is a lot of theater here. Oh, it's I mean, it's coming we were about competing. Garbo was competing against 144 productions, mm -hmm. and we got critics pick in Backstage West. We got I an know, excellent review in the LA Times, and we got picked at one of the best ten plays of 2001 by the Advocate magazine. And that, that, that uh, I was like, right. oh my God, yeah. thank you, thank you. I know that I mean, made my Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have, uh, you know, I mean, I'm uh, looking at the awards you've gotten, and, uh, uh, but we just got another Gotta single go. for a clip, and this yes, time, this is Marlena Dietrich. into it. Oh, um, it's, again, one of <coughs> Marlena's uh, strong sides, where uh, she saw Mercedes, and uh, she uh, decided, I think impulsively, to uh, go and knock at her door and, and visit her. Unexpectedly. Well, I wanted to see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Lots of> <laughs> <things happen. laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're ready. <laughs> There's someone downstairs to see you. <coughs> Tell that someone to go away. I don't want to see anybody. Oh, I think you better see this one. She told me to give you these. Marlene Dietrich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Miss Dietrich. She must have mistaken the house for someone else's. <coughs> oh, no, there was no mistake. She <coughs> said your name very clearly. Angel in Morocco. Let's not talk about pictures. Oh, 
<laughs> I would like to suggest something if you don't think I'm mad. That evening when I looked at you, I felt you were sad. I am sad too, and lonely. <laughs> you looked like a white prince the other night. I appreciate you coming. It must have been difficult to ring a stranger's bell. No, oh, it's funny. It was not. It was only when I came up here and I was face to face with you that I felt shy. Now, I would like to tell you something that will make you laugh. I am a wonderful cook. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about that? Will you let me cook for you? Oh. I'll cook wonderful things. I live on the beach. The house is quite charming. There's a swimming pool. Will you come and see me? Perhaps on weekends. I'm working on Rasputin, a scenario for Metro. But why don't you come tomorrow evening for dinner? That's a bargain. <laughs> that was a terrific performance, Maria. God, I want to see you again. But we don't have much time, so I want to get with you for a second about the March of Theatre again. So well, we'll give the audience like uh, some parting words, how they can get involved, the sponsorship. You definitely and can get involved. Just check out the website at marchatheatre.org. And the, our next production is in October. It's going to be at the Ivor Theatre in Hollywood, and it's going to be called Love Struck. And please, I urge you to support live theatre in Los Angeles. It's wonderful, and we should really keep it alive. Great. That's well done. Anyway, I want to thank both of you for being my uh, guests today. I had You're a welcome. terrific time. I'm looking forward to seeing your next production. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you in uh, whatever you will be doing, maybe again uh, with Odalise. <laughs> <laughs> and to my I audience, so. I, <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you enjoyed our show because I certainly did. And uh, I learned a lot about uh, women in uh, theater. So uh, maybe we'll do it again after your next uh, production. I hope so. Okay. And uh, until uh, we see each other again, be well. Until next time. Bye-bye. That was... Uh